Good, Good morning. morning. Well, it's Friday. I know, it's Friday, it's raining. I know, I was going to say, I don't want to get all doom and gloom at the top, but look at the weather. What's happened to the Great British Summer? Well, I'm not sure, actually, but I've got trousers on, so that says it all. Yes, you have. <laughs> that says uh, it all. There's lots to come today, but first, as I said, the weekend is here, and what better way to celebrate the end of the week with a great big surprise this morning makeover for one lucky viewer? Yes, today we are going to be surprising Jane Lawson, who has been nominated by her son Thomas. There she is, you can see her there. She is completely unsuspecting, sat in the studio cafe with her son Thomas, enjoying a nice cup of tea, maybe maybe a hot chocolate, yeah. we don't know. But she thinks that she's going to be coming into the studio shortly to be chatting to us to tell us all about her son's incredible weight loss story. But actually, she's here for a This Morning Makeover and we are about to surprise her. We're getting good at this, aren't we? Well, fingers crossed. Hopefully. We did well last week. Well, listen, Rylan the Giant is hiding. <laughs> uh, he's hiding around the corner of the big side I'm waiting to surprise Jane. Oh, OMG, I'm totes excited. Ryan, yeah. are you ready? Okay, Ryan, go for it. Let's do it. Right, guys, so I'm here at ITV where I'm joined by two people that are on the show today. Hi, guys. Hello, Jane. Hello. I'm Ryan. How are you? You all right? Lovely yes, to meet you. Hi, Tom. I'm Ryan. Nice Hi. to meet you. Now, Tom, listen, I know you're on the show today uh, and you've done something absolutely incredible. You've managed to lose. 10 stone in 10 months, is that right? Yeah, that's right. How it's, did you do that? It's just diet exercise, no magic trick, no secret spell, it's just, and obviously hard work, and it's clearly paid off. But one oh. thing you did have was the support from your mother, Jane. That's right, Jane. That's How fine. are you? Yes, fine, thank you, fine. Are you wondering why I'm here? I am, yes, yes. <laughs> so do I some days. <laughs> but Jane, I've got a couple of friends I want you to meet. If I just bring in Darren, Bryony and Leo, and if I just quickly pass you over to two of my other friends, Michelle and Marvin, they're going to tell you why you're really here. Right. Hi, Hello, Jane. Jane. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you are live on ITV, and we are going to be giving you an amazing makeover. So, Rylan, everyone, bring her through. Come and join us in the studio, please. We're on our way, guys. Don't worry, Jane. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, Jane. <laughs> Don't forget your bag. Oh, <laughs> good. Love okay. it, love it. I love the way that of all people we send to go and be secretive, discreet, inconspicuous, we send Rylan. <laughs> of, course, of course we do, of course we do. Uh, we're going to meet Jane and see the results of the makeover a bit later in the show. And also on the show, our very own action hero, Alison Hammond, will be squaring up to the stars of The Expendables. <laughs> Love that. That's good. I wish I went. <laughs> As I said earlier, the weather is looking a bit dodgy this weekend, but it's still summer here at this morning, and the barbecue brothers are here cooking up an all American meat feast. Guys, what you got for us today? Today, guys, we've got some uh, skirt steak with chimichurri dressing. We've got some barbecue beans. And believe it or not, we're going to be doing some bacon-wrapped bananas with a spiced maple Ooh, dressing. Lovely. Love we was supposed to have the barbecue outside today, but obviously, but obviously, you know, we've taken it inside. Yes, of course. <laughs> and we'll be talking to newlyweds Kate and Darren Donaghy. Now, Darren has been accused on many occasions of punching above his weight. And his new wife, Kate, well, Kate describes Darren as her prince charming and believes she, uh, he, Darren believes, sorry, that he is the luckiest man on earth. Now, do you think that he is punching above his weight? We'll be chatting to the pair of them later on. I like Darren. Well, you would, because you've got a lot in common. What do you mean? You're punching above your weight, what can I say? We'll also be taking your calls on the subject with relationships expert Dr Pam Spur. Now, do you think that your partner is more attractive than you? Do you worry that he or she will go off with someone else? Or do you stress every time they're out of sight? Or maybe you're the beautiful one in your relationship yeah. and you think your partner has other qualities that far outweigh their looks. What are you doing? <laughs> nothing, nothing at all, <laughs> nothing at all. Give us a call on the subject, we'd love to hear from you. If you've got any relationship insecurities, the number to call is 08. 1000 30 40 44. Now, calls are free from BT landlines. They're calls from some mobiles and other networks may charge. You can also email us at this morning at itv.com. Uh, we need your emails by 11.15 today, and you must be 18 or over. This is how your Friday this morning is shaping up. Now, I'm sure you've seen all over the news in the last 24 hours, the home of Sir Cliff Richard has been searched by police in relation to an alleged historical sex offence. Now, no arrests have been made and Sir Cliff has denied the allegation. Now, in his statement, Sir Cliff complained that the press appeared to have been given advance notice that his home in Berkshire was to be searched by the police. Uh, this raises the question, should there be a right to anonymity in investigations of this nature? Uh, we've got privacy lawyer Mark Lewis and broadcaster Christine Hamilton. They're here. Welcome, guys. Uh, Christine, we'll come to you first. Um, where do you stand on all of this? Well, I think uh, everybody starts from the same point. Nobody wants a single person who's guilty of 
rape or whatever to go free. Of course mm -hmm, we don't. Mm -hmm. Equally, nobody wants a single innocent person to have to go through the sort of hell that we have seen um, people have to go mm -hmm. through. And it's a question of how we square that circle. You're never going to have anything perfect. Mm -hmm. And I think the pendulum has swung too far now. And I think it's, frankly, I think it's absolutely outrageous that the general public knows that Cliff Richard's home has been searched. He hasn't been yeah. arrested, he hasn't mm -hmm. been charged, and the police say they didn't tip anybody off, but somehow the BBC knew about it, and there was a helicopter hovering when the police arrived. Now, we have no right to know that. He hasn't mm. even been charged, and I think the very bottom line is that until somebody is actually charged, yeah. there should mm -hmm. be, he should have total anonymity. Yeah, well, I must say, Christine, first of all, the, the, the South Yorkshire police have told us that they did not leak any information. No, I'm not blaming uh, the police. And also, Thames Valley Police did not speak to any media outlets prior to the warrant being executed <coughs> in Sunningdale, Berkshire, yesterday. Uh, this is a South Yorkshire police investigation and local officers from Thames Valley Police assisted South Yorkshire officers in the search of the property. But this begs the question, how did the BBC how did it happen? find out? Yes. You know, uh, Mark, is there no legal protection to, to keep someone in such a position? Uh, you know, if where there's no arrest or charges made, well, is there well, any protection? Well, at the unfortunately, you can't unscramble the egg. So yes. now, now it's happened, it, it's happened, it's out there. Mm. There has to be a proper investigation firstly, of course, Thames Valley Police, South Yorkshire Police can can say they didn't do it mm -hmm. and they didn't leak it, but somebody obviously leaked it because the BBC were there and lesser yeah. over everybody's house in in a helicopter. And of course, yeah. if it'd been yeah. the tabloid press who'd done it, the BBC would be the first to criticise. Mm -hmm. There has been a leak from the police in whatever we, way. We don't Maybe know that, well we do know there's been a leak from the information that the police were doing. It may not be the police who've made that leak, mm -hmm. but somebody has provided information from the police to the BBC, yeah. and we need to know how that happened. Absolutely. Uh, oh, and obviously that hasn't been confirmed yet. But where where do we stand on the fact that so all if this all this has happened now? So it's obviously like a media frenzy. Is if if you know, hopefully that it, it comes off that n none of those allegations are true. Where do we is the Cliff's name always going to be tarnished yeah, now? Then. This is the problem. There will always be people who say that there's no smoke without fire. Now, mm -hmm. my husband and I were arrested in 2011 and accused of rape. Yeah. And what happened to us was we were, t we were asked to go to Barkingside Police Station for reasons of our privacy, because nobody would be there. We wouldn't be lining up with other people to be arrested. Oh. Right. By the time we came out of that police station five hours later, the entire media were there, mm. half a dozen camera crews. So somebody told them. And there were still people who say about us, we got away with it. Now, you know, the girl was a complete fantasy. She was aided and abetted by, wait for it, Max Clifford, and mm. where is he now? Mm. So I'm afraid this is the trouble. And if you take a list, and I'm not going to name anybody, but if you take a list of the celebrity names who have been out there, yeah. and you ask the average man in the street, which of these have been charged, which have been accused, which have been completely non guilt blocked, they wouldn't they know. There's right, a sort yeah. of mush, so it's, it's always there. Do you think on, on the flip side, to, to counter the argument, would you say that there's a case for revealing identity so it's a kind of strategy to flesh out the victims in order to maybe give them confidence to come forward the, look the, there has to be a balance mm -hmm. it, it, sometimes it, it, look one has a right of anonymity privacy be, certainly you should have before uh, before arrest and there's not been an arrest in mm -hmm. in this case after arrest and certainly after charge there yeah. can be a case for saying look we want to know these things, and we see with mm -hmm. Stuart Hall, for example, for convictions, or Max Clifford, who's just been mentioned, that yeah. other people came forward afterwards because this was out there. So obviously w one has to look at this balance and try and get witnesses. Yeah. But the police really ought to be satisfied that they have information to charge somebody with something yeah. in the first place before perhaps looking for other people to corroborate it, and especially when it's old, old charges. Yeah. Yeah. There, there might be people, of course, who I see the information, and we've seen, we've seen this happening um, with Operation Utree, for example, that people have come forward and said, yeah. oh, well, I thought I was on my own, or I was told by my parents at the time I was a teenager that I, I shouldn't make a fuss or anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there is a good service for people to come forward. 
but where someone hasn't actually been charged, charged. or even arrested, yeah. then... Yeah. yeah. I mean, do you think there's an argument for the law being slightly out of date now? Because if, if you, you know, the, the age-old saying is that you're innocent until you're proven guilty. Yes. However, now, with the media frenzy in the circus that happens around these types of mm. events, is it a case that you're it's... guilty until you're proven innocent? Well, there's a certain amount of trial by media, and rape is, has a unique stigma about it. Mm. And if somebody is, you know, if, if their name is anywhere near anything like that, it's mm. very, very difficult ever to shake that off. And I think what is yeah. terribly important to remember is this isn't just celebrities this happens it's happening today yeah. to people up and down the country and if you get publicity on your own little local paper that for you is just as devastating as, as the worldwide publicity that, that Cliff Richard is getting absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and it's recognized that rape is, is um, a unique situation so one doesn't name a rape victim and quite rightly so mm -hmm. yeah. but but the same happens to somebody who's wrongfully alleged to have raped somebody. Yeah, absolutely. They, they come out, they, they get tarnished, and they get tarnished for life. And of course, the law is behind. You know, we're, we're, the law is still on uh, newsprint. And of course, we've got the internet, we've got Google, we've got Twitter. Twitter will be awash with people making all sorts mm -hmm. of allegations mm -hmm. today yeah. for no other reason than they've seen the details mm -hmm. of. Of an, uh, uh, not even of an arrest, of a search, yeah. Yeah. of a search which will probably show nothing, could show nothing, yeah. etc. But and the damage is already out there. Yeah, exactly. Done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, still to come, the weather might not be great for the weekend, but it's still summer here at this morning, and we have the Barbecue Brothers showing Marvin how it's actually done. <laughs> They're going to be cooking up an American meat feast. And she was jumped on by right and outside the studio earlier after the break. We'll be meeting makeover mum Jane and her son Thomas, and it could be one more surprise too. We'll be back after the break. Now, earlier today, Rylan jumped out and surprised Jane Lawson with the news of her This Morning Makeover. Jane was nominated by her son, Thomas. Let's find out why. A very deserving woman, Jane. Welcome to This Morning and welcome to our star team, Leo, Leo Bryony and Darren. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi, Thomas. Good morning. morning. Hello. How's it going? Oh, I'm oh. fine, thank you. Good, good. So you're obviously a little bit shocked. I am. Yeah, you thought shocked. today was all going to be about Thomas, yes, but it turns yes. out it's actually about you. Yes. Which, yes. <laughs> which is great news. Yes. Uh. Uh, Thomas, I'll start with you. I want to say congratulations, first of all, for for losing the weight and how, how do you feel now? Oh, it's amazing. It's just a case of, I notice it in little things. I notice it in going for walks for fun rather than being forced into it. Just my movability, like being able to just enjoy my life now. Yeah. How old are you now, Thomas? Uh, I'm 20, I'm 19 now. 19 <laughs> and you was about 16 when you was at your... Yeah, I was 17 when I was at my heaviest and then okay. over 10 months I lost 10 stone. Wow, so you was 20, around 24 stone yeah. and you lost 10 stone over 10 months. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's amazing. How did, how did you do that? It was just simple diet and exercise. It was a case of knowing what to eat and what not to eat and just knowing if I have a big meal to make the extra effort. And of course, determination kicks in and it's just focus and willpower. Wow. Well, well done you. Now, it's actually not just about your mum today, we've got a surprise for you. We're actually going to give you a makeover as well. <laughs> we get to give you a complete star revamp. We're going to find, Darren's going to help, aren't you, Darren, to find some great clothes. And actually, tell us what you've got in store, Darren, today. OK, well, for Thomas, I'm thinking, you know, he's transformed himself quite literally from the inside out. It's such yes. an amazing feat. Mm -hmm. I mean, what determination. So I want to reflect that now. Yeah. I mean, Thomas, I think it's fair enough to say that you're used to wearing baggy clothes, track suits, things that are all very loose. So I want to give him a more tailored look, a more streamlined look. And also, you're entering your 20s as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. a little bit more of a grown-up look. Yes. <laughs> so you're going to have the works. Leo's going to be working on your hair. Definitely. And yes. So first of all, let's bring, let's bring it back to Mum. You've had your time. You've had your time, Thomas. <laughs> Mum's, Mum's like, it's my go. <laughs> Bryony, what's in store for Mum with makeup? Well, the thing is, Jane obviously is wearing a lovely lippy, so she's not afraid of colour on the lips, which is great, because mm. I love a bit of colour. Yes. But what I am going to show her is how to just make her beautiful, huge blue eyes pop. So I might do a little bit of an eyeliner and also show her how to do that. But also, I really want to concentrate on a little bit of contouring, a bit of highlighting, so she can kind of really pop out her cheekbones and things like that. So just really beautiful skin. Fab, sounds good. <laughs> yes, it does. OK, Leo, how about hair? What are we going to do well, for hair? Well, again, accentuating the cheekbones, moving Jane away from that Bob style, getting some lift into the hair and also really awakening the actual haircut that she has with good products and a bit more of a routine for Jane, so yeah. it's going to be great. Lovely. And Thomas, can you tell us why you nominated your mum? Uh, because she's always supported me, not just through my weight loss, not just through my A-levels, it's just everything that she does is for me and my two older brothers, uh, Matthew and James, and 
our dad, Brian, she's just constantly looking out for the family and just yeah. constantly helping anyone who needs help. Oh, oh that's lovely. Well, that's and Jane, you must be very, very proud of what Thomas has achieved. Oh, he's done fantastic, absolutely. Oh, she's oh, getting... Get, get, get yeah, it's marvellous, honestly. Oh, 